Hey folks, Jason Dukes, Dirt Race Life. Turning one of these into one of those. Next step, lower control arms. So I've got these bead blasted, I've got the parts for them. Let's get started. So when it comes to me putting together my lower control arms, I'm using both stock parts and also race specific aftermarket. On the lower ball joint, I am totally fine just using a Moog uh, lower ball joint. So this is the K6145 that goes in this particular application. There are two reasons. One, I'm okay not running the low friction um, for the cost. Like this is a $15 to $20 part and you know, for me, the gain I'd get from a low friction, and there is possibly some slight gain there, I don't dispute that, but uh, for the cost with me, you know, I might lose one or two of these a year um, to damage and then replace them every winter regardless. I, and I'm okay with running this instead, um, just giving up that low friction uh, gain I'd have. And then additionally, um, the other reason that you would wanna go aftermarket is if you wanna run a stud length difference. And I know they would definitely do that um, probably maybe in some applications on the road or on asphalt or something. But for this dirt application, the way I'm building this car, I want the stock length on the lower ball joint. Um, now we are gonna do some stuff on the upper, but on the lower stock length, definitely not any taller. And um, for those are the reasons that I'm just running a stock ball joint. However, on the bushing, I want to run a solid bushing on the rear. This is steel on steel. Uh, it is likely two different kinds of steel and that's why it doesn't gall. I have run these for years. This is a new set going on this, but uh, I've got a Camaro front stub that's been through two or three different cars. And I have moved these things from one to the next to the next. I have uh, tried to push a few walls down and lost a lower control arm in the process cut these out of the lower control arm, put them in the next. They still look just like new. In my opinion, they are indestructible. And that's a good reason to invest in them, but that's not actually the reason that I run these. Um, and so let's cover that before we start putting this together. So let's imagine Lower control arm, bushing, ball joint, spindle, we'll just say contact patch here on the car. Got a big spring in the middle. This is not to scale <laughs> by any means. Um, in shock. Okay. So now that we got that. So the ground's pushing up, the car's pushing down. So we have pressure up here, okay? The spring is pushing down here. So that means this lower control arm is creating pressure up there, okay? So when we are, the car is just sitting all the time, we're getting load, since this is pushing up, we're getting compression on the rubber here. So this lower control arm is moving and it's up. So that right there is modifying that spring rate. So the spring rate becomes a combination of these two, all right? Additionally, when you go, so when you're working on the track, when you're entering the turn, when you're working through any ruts or anything like that, um, the variations in the wheel pressure here, I mean, this is constantly being compromised. This is constantly creating modifications, both to the shock and to the spring. Uh, a, and so also, as we enter the turn, we're getting lateral pressure on that contact patch. So that lateral pressure on these rubbers, on these bushings, is creating movement here and here, compression and expansion on, on the rubber boot ball joints there. And it absolutely is moving in those ball joints. It creates a great ride on the street, but on the track, it is modifying our spring rate and it is modifying our shock. Uh, everything it's doing there. Another 
another issue, and I'm gonna have to draw this a little bit differently, but let me draw it here. So if we look top down on, the low, on this lower control arm here, like this. Never said I could draw, y'all. When you apply the brake, this lower control arm is getting pressure on it front to back. And you're getting movement here. So you'll get, for example, you'll get compression on one side, extension on the other, or you'll get compression or an extension. And so what's happening is your entire ball joint is shifting in relationship to the car because of that. So like when you enter into the turn and you're doing this, you're actually changing your caster um, in a way that you're not accounting for. Uh, you're not seeing that on a pull down machine. You're not seeing that, you know, any kind of way you're jacking up the car or doing anything with it, but it exists on the track because you have an unaccounted for movement that's happening. And so for these reasons, I would never run um, rubber here on this bushing on that lower control arm on the front of the car. And that to me is a bigger showstopper and bigger reason to always go to some type of a solid device because I'm wanting everything controlled here, nothing controlled here. I don't want this unknown modifier happening um, in, in this system. And so that's the big reason. It's not even the durability, it's that. The way I do these, and I've probably done five or six over the years um, for just for builds, not just replacing broke parts. But I don't use a shop press for this. I don't have one and, and I really don't have the space uh, for a lot of equipment. And so I learned from, I did a lot of everything in the backyard when I was younger. And I worked, if I couldn't do it with an arc welder and a torch, it pretty much didn't get done. And uh, for that reason, I, this works. It's it, for me. I feel like it's simple. It's effective. Uh, no, I probably wouldn't do this for a car on the street, but uh, but for racing, where that a lot of times, um, you know, for example, you race on Friday night and you have damage, and you're racing Saturday. I'm breaking out a torch and I'm working really quick to make things happen. And so for that reason, I heat up my parts and just drop them in. I take a hammer and I, I drive them in. And I would, like I said, I do this for race application. I don't recommend it necessarily for a street application. And so I just throw a wood block up here and I'm gonna just throw a couple screws through it to, uh, to hold it in place. And just keep the block in place while I'm doing the work. So we're going to drop it into that hole. We are going to heat that way up. We're going to heat that way up. Let's see if my, my tip's going to act decent. It's preheated the base around it then it will wick the heat away so fast that uh, you'll really struggle to get the uh, lower bar going in and you know like these moves that I use they don't have any plastic or nylon parts in them and I just purge the grease out um, they're so thick and big there's not a lot of heat transfer that's going on into them but uh, I'm not going to say it's always went perfect, but it works. It's simple. And it works for me. And so, so what I'm doing is, is I'm heating down at the base, but I'm seeing my ring start to cherry up. I got a little bit of slag there, so where you see that flash coming from. 
So, all right. Now that it is carrying up on top, I'm gonna get on the ring a little bit. And I'm just gonna get everything nice and hot. And then I'm gonna drop it in. And I am going to just take a hammer and drive it home. That edge around that ball joint, um, that's crushed down around a cap. You're not gonna hurt the ball inside. It's not gonna crush down on the sleeve that holds the ball. There's plenty of meat there. Um, but leave me a comment below, you know, about your thoughts on it, and then also, you know, how you do it. Um, this is one way, and for me, it's a shortcut, and like a lot of the work I do, it's it's a compromise. So I'm I'm not, I'm giving up some things, possibly in accuracy. So that's in, that's it. Um, and like I said, it's gonna transfer some heat into this ball joint, but that is a big old piece of forged steel. It's gonna soak that heat up without, you know, transferring it, you know, really deep into it, really hot and compromising the stud or anything like that. It's fine. So next up is the bushings. Let's use that block of wood there. So I'm going to try something a little different with bushings. I haven't done one on this table before with this vise. This is just a good old El Chifo vise. I am terrible about beating on things in my vices in the room. And I think in life in general, I need to just buy cheap vices and live with being destructive on them. And when I when I destroy one, don't cry about it, just replace it. And, uh, so. Alright, so we got that locked down. Now there are two different sizes. On every one of these lower control arms, there's going to be two different sizes. So let's have the right one. It's this one. And see, it will nearly fit now. And so you tight, and it only goes, it goes from the outside in, there is a lip, and there is a step size, so that will fit through this side, but this lip right here won't, and then the lower part, you know, won't fit there. So we're gonna hit two rings up. Another thing to note, the alamite does not need to be pointed straight down. Do not point it straight down, because when you uh, have this on the car and you jack it up and this lower control arm's down, it will hide that, zerk, that uh, alamite, that grease fitting. And so for that reason, I want this grease fitting actually pointed back towards and out towards the spring pocket for that reason. All right, so now we know where that's gonna go. Let's do this. All right, it's, it is two grains, so we're gonna have to work back and forth between them. But you've got a big open, big open ring there, and it's gonna heat up really easy. They're gonna get really big, and it's just gonna fall in. And when we place this in here, we don't want the alamite pointing straight down. We want the, that alamite to be pointed back out towards the spring pocket. And the reason for that is because when we, if you jack the car up and you're not jacking it under the lower control arm, this lower control arm is going to drop down. And it will actually hide that grease fitting up into the frame um, enough that it will be difficult to get on it with a grease gun. So, make sure you know where the hole is, and then when you drop it in, because once it, once it tightens up, now you can, you can heat these right back up, and of course, this is nothing but steel, so you could, if you drop this in and you weren't happy with it, yes, you could just turn around and just cherry all this stuff up, and it would probably just fall right out. And, uh, and I took them out, you know, like that. And some of them, I have spot welded them, just, I used to, I'd spot weld them. And what I found was, is they're, they're captive in there anyway in the frame, they can't come out. And so, I'm not sure that you even need to spot weld them on. All right, so I got my top pretty, I got my top pretty nice. I'm gonna work on this bottom a little bit. And 
And so top, then I'll work on the bottom, and then I'm gonna come back to the top and just kind of bring it back up. It's gonna hold, it's gonna hold a lot of heat still, but we'll just get it right back up to where it was. And honestly, if this outside edge is cherried up, she's probably opened up plenty just doing that. Um, what are y'all's thoughts on, you know, how much does it compromise this, this arm's, you know, integrity? You know, I always wonder that, you know, I think, I think stuff's way overbuilt to me. And when it comes to just racing, this stuff is way overbuilt for racing. And if you tear it up, you have, you have hit something horrendous that you were done regardless. Um, when I grease them, I do inspect them. And I have, even the ones where I have tried to push a wall down and fold it up the lower control arm, I've never found one of these rings to be egged out, and I've always put them in this way. That is my personal experience, not necessarily what everyone should do, but, uh, but it is my personal experience. Okay. So hit the top, hit the bottom, came back to the top. Turn that off. Figure out where the grease fitting is. I want the grease fitting turned back and angle towards me. That is very hot. Don't put your hands on it. And look, it literally fell in. And so now, I'm not going to unclamp this because this is probably so hot that it would fall out. So I'm going to give it a minute and let that heat uh, move in and move out and shrink up on it. And then once it won't move, then I'll flip this thing over. Here we are. on that and let's get going I'm gonna have to use that big hammer and I shouldn't so if you if you're putting these in and you start wailing here's an important point you can't beat on these and the reason you can't beat on these is because this is a soft steel so the inner bushing is hard the pin that goes through it is hard but this is soft this is very malleable and i'm suspecting that that has to do with the you know as far as the, the grease between them and keeping them from galling to each other but i tell you this is so soft and i know this from experience if you go to wailing on this with a hammer you are going to deform it and then you're going to be sitting there grinding it to try to get the pin to work again and so now you don't have good surfaces anymore and you know i don't know you know what's that doing are you bringing dirt in there early it's the thing you got to keep in mind too they're you're constantly having dirt getting worked into these you're constantly purging the dirt out and if you mark it if you go to having to grind all over it you, you beat it all up is your grease following a particular trail out when you purge it and you're not getting all your dirt out and so that's keep that in mind um, figure that out all right so that outside starting to rip get hot so i'm going to get on this inside now i'm not going to try to burn up this vice but it's not like this is the most expensive vice ever so i'm not real worried about it but, uh, Get that all warmed up down here. And same deal. When we put this in, this alumite. Another thing to note here: these alumites got hot there for a second, didn't you? Um, these alumites, the, the ones that these bushings that I bought here, they were a drive-in zerk fitting, and I loathe those drive-in fittings because they work great day one but you're under the car you've got a fitting that's bad you can't get it out now you've got to drill it out well you've got to stop and pull that lower control arm off because you've had to drill it out you've got to clean that hole up you can't have that metal going off up into your bushing and uh and then you still have to find either another drive in or you're going to have to convert it over to a thread in fitting so i just from pain of experience I've learned cut that cut that short from the get-go I drill them I uh, use a quarter 28 SAE tap and I tap them 
and put a quarter 28 um, Zerk fitting in them. And so if I have a, if I have one that doesn't want to take grease, I just thread it out and throw another one in. It's just food for thought. And save yourself some heartache down the road because they're going to last for years. So do them right before you ever put them on the first time or you'll end up doing them right after you have a problem and then you're going to be aggravated. Alright, so I'm back to the outside. I'm on the outside, inside, now I'm back to the outside. And I'm going to say right there. Let's start this one. Let's see if it lacked as nice for us. So I'm going to turn that fitting back toward the cup. I'm going to not put my hands on that. And she's in. And they are both. I'm looking at the two Allen lights and just line them up just so cars up and on lift. People don't say, wow, that's shoddy. They're pointing two different directions. All right, so got this back off the vise and we got to put the Allen lights in. And so this Moog, it already comes with a nice big quarter 28 thread. Allen light on it. And so we'll put that one in and I, I can't handle, I can't manipulate Allen lights with gloves on. You will snap these off by the way. Um, I use, I've got one of these little um, plastic quarter ratchets and try to try to remind myself when I'm using this size stuff, don't go crazy with it. And so that is plenty. You feel it start snugging up. You're just pushing grease in. Don't, don't feel compelled to like make that be flush. If it tightens up and you see a gap under that and that threads, it's you are greasing to purge anyway. It is not a sealed system. Do not panic. Right. And so, like I said, these I have already threaded. And so since I threaded those. Um, so I used a bottom tap so it doesn't have a tapered point. And the only other note that I would say is, is when I tap these, and I, I need to show that because that's kind of, it's time consuming. I just take my time doing it. But when I tap these, make sure you take a piece of sandpaper and get on the inside. And so, you know, as you come through, when you drill it and tap it, if, that, if you do decide to do that, just keep in mind that that's going to create this rough interior that that inside bushing is going to slide across and you just scar that up. And you don't want to start out like with them. With a big scar on the inside of them if you can keep from it so yeah maybe avoid that again i'm just snugging i want to be able to easily replace them in their life if i ever need to that's ready to go i've already done the other one uh in the next video uh we got a 9 16 threaded rod that's straight and this is going to be straight or we'll check it we'll see how straight it is if we need to straighten this we'll heat this up and we will bend uh but we're we're not going to cut or grind to try to bend to, to try to line up how these bushings are putting them in but then we'll just check them we'll make sure they're straight uh they always have been but after a right after a wreck uh they can get they can get distorted then we'll turn around and on the frame we're gonna take and the holes uh, through the frame itself, they won't be uh, from the factory. You know, it was rubber bushings in its stock configuration and that was for a reason. They never line up perfectly. And so we're gonna put the rods in and we'll straighten up and we'll get these on. We'll start talking about anti-dive, pro-dive, what we're gonna do on this car. If you have a comment, uh, let me know. Let me know, I'm, I'm reading everything and uh, good, bad and whatever it is, I'm, I'm taking away what I can from it. So. Leave me a comment. If you like it, let me know. And please do subscribe. Thank y'all.